thing you know, the weekend starts. I'll see how my blood is tomorrow, but I don't think it'll be as bad as it was the other time. <laughs> Sometimes I screw it up too. I don't know if you do that. So, lately I have been and everything. Cause I've been getting the habit of doing my blood sugar again since the first of the month. Mm -hmm. I think it's because I have, you know, so this is making me more mindful now about stuff like that. Oh yeah, there's no construction. <laughs> I just noticed it just now. Construction um, equipment in there. I wasn't expecting to see trolleys or something stupid like that, but I didn't expect to see construction equipment. up by Southampton Street. That'll be a real test. That time of the day. Actually, we're early enough, we should be able to use the HOV. That'll be awesome. Woohoo! <laughs> I gotta exercise those brain cells. They're sleeping deeply up in my head somewhere right now. <laughs> discussion so that I was a little late getting over the other 
The kid didn't seem like he was really interested in selling a lot of stuff anyway, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, I think we hit a rush hour here. They're not totally. RS fan, Red Sox fan. And Westboro's not close. I don't know why he's going that way. That guy lost uh, in the... Uh, Dr. Shiva? Still advertised, yeah. Dr. Shiva. I know nothing about him. <laughs> He just appeared all of a sudden out of nowhere and said, I am an MIT PhD. Okay. And what else goes for you? <laughs> what else do you have going for you, you know? Mm -hmm. Never said anything. And then Governor Baker said that uh, for those who are interested, you should vote for the other guy. Was it McMorrow or something? Oh, it was Kevin O'Connor. Yeah, okay. For, for, he, and he's going to go against... Uh, Ed Markey. Yeah. Well... Ed Malarkey's going to win anyway. We all know that anyway. In the end, it's not going to matter, okay? But this Shiva thing was funny. It's like he just appeared everywhere. For what? It's like, yeah, okay. Who are you? What do you do? <laughs> what are you? We'd like to know a little about you, you know? There's a lot of people who have PhDs from MIT, and some of them don't know their way from up and right, okay? Mm-hmm. What's your bright idea? Didn't get, he, I bet he didn't get that far. No. And he was very late. He didn't get into the media uh, market until, I'd say, second or third week of August, which is like practically at the whole election. You know, if you're going to do something like that and you want to be serious, you might talk uh, May, June, maybe. Yeah, or you earlier At least to get a name. You know, you got to get one, uh, at least one interview with uh, Jonathan Keller, okay? That would help. Or at least one interview with, let's say, um, Ed, Ed Jeff, Hard Jeff Cooner. You know Jeff Cooner? No, I don't. WRKO? Oh. The radio? Oh, yeah. I, I, I heard the station. The Boston, Bull, the Boston Bulldozer. That's what he calls himself, Jeff, Jeff Cooner. Why is he calling him? He's a big, he's a big mouth. He just, he's, I'm going to, I am going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm He's what I, what you would call a club fighter. You know, he's got a lot of mouth. Mm -hmm. And he, you know, if nobody's holding him, he's got a good punch. But once they start landing on him, then it gets slow real fast, okay? <laughs> There's a car from Ohio. And there's a train. <laughs> That's a fantasy of mine is take one of those trains yep. and take it to California. An MBTA train. Can he can he do that? Ted, Ted? Sure you can make it out there. You'd have to sleep on the have to sleep on the uh, seats. <laughs> you can make it to California, absolutely. So it's like there's not like no restrictions. No reason not to, no. It's even got the PTC. They can go anywhere. They're not confined. But they're will. not, you know, I mean, you, yeah, you got a John, <laughs> such as it is, but it's not awful comfortable to go across the uh, across the country with. Yeah, those, those seats are comfortable, but not that comfortable. That's okay. That's not what you're doing anyway. <laughs> hey, believe it or not, in the Penzi, they used to have those P70 coaches. And people... Daily, thousands of people, they would go from New York to Chicago sleeping on their coach, on their coach seat. Huh. That was their whole life, all the way in the trip. But the trip was only 30 hours or something like that, okay? You might have a little bit of, uh, you know, stiff neck or something by the time you got to Chicago, but you got there, and, you know, when you got there, then you'd settle in somewhere you're going to be, you know? The Penzi used to make uh, extra buck with the hotel. Mm. They used to make hotels in the cities that they went through and 
if you felt that serious about it, you could travel that day and then you'd have to stay at the hotel however far the tra tray would get. And then move on the next day and then stop again, you know, if that if you couldn't get that far. Mm -hmm. uh, but they try their best to make sure those trains took no more than a day and a half to get anywhere from end to end. End to end meaning New York to St. Louis. Gotcha. Or vice versa. That uh, that little story in the book I just well that will be published next week about the TAT. That was the beginnings of what became TWA Airlines. Ah, uh, interesting. Okay, and what it was, they used to have a train. The Penzi ran a special train for them from Penn Station in New York to a place called Port Columbus, Ohio, which of course is Columbus, Ohio. It's where the airport is now because the railroad went right by it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they used to have a special. Uh, station there, you'd get your baggage and your stuff off the off the train, and then take you in a you know hotel overnight there. First thing in the morning when you get up, you'd get on an airplane, tri motor, and you'd wind up flying from Columbus, Ohio, stop at Indianapolis, and then uh, fly across the country to. Um, are we open here? I think it may be. Here we are. Anyway, you'd fly across the country, and the next stop was Winoka, Oklahoma. And the, the plane would end up landing there, and you'd have the night there, and then the next day, or I'm sorry, you wouldn't stay there. You'd go to Winoka, and they'd put you on a Santa Fe night train overnight. Oh, cool. And the train would uh, take you to Clovis, New Mexico, the next lake. Okay. And then you'd uh, change to an airplane in Clovis, New Mexico. One flight would go to Albuquerque, another one would go to Los Angeles, and another one went to um, Bakersfield, and then Fresno, and then finally San Francisco. Okay, and it was fine; they'd have no problems at all until they got to Al Albuquerque. Once they started getting the help west of Albuquerque, in those days with those tri motors, they couldn't get them to fly safely over the. Uh, Grand Canyon mm -hmm. and over the mountains there, over the over the uh, the Rockies, where it was really serious stuff that they'd get, you know be foggy, they'd get lost. So I think it started at the end of July, and then they had their first crash early September. And the people that were taking those packages, they weren't they weren't uh, poor. It was three hundred something fare for the whole thing. Okay, that was a lot of money in 1929. Oh yes. So there was a few um, well-endowed and talented people that wound up getting killed by the plane crashes. But my goodness, the flying was such uh, crude in those days. When they used to fly, there was no radar, there was no nav system, there was no nothing. So the pilot would be up there in the plane and they'd be looking down the ground, because they're only about 2,000 up. Mm -hmm. like they'd be looking down on the ground, trying to wait, looking for signs, because what they used to do, they'd put rocks on the ground with an arrow saying, LA, this way. <laughs> Seriously, they did that. <laughs> or, wherever, or they'd say whatever the next uh, checkpoint was on the land, they'd say, AF, this way. Well, unless it's, you know, bright daylight, sun daylight, you couldn't see it. And half the time it'd be fog bound or something like that. You couldn't see that stuff. Next thing you know, you're flying right into a, in a mountainside or something like that. Okay? So anyway, they did have some crashes. They had some legal problems. They got sold to another bunch of investors in 1931. Only two, two years. And they uh, combined their company, which was uh, Transcon, or TAT, Transcon, to uh, Western Airlines, okay? And it became T and W A. And then Howard, Her Howard uh, Hughes bought it, I think in 1937, and he had dreams, big dreams, which of course he accomplished somewhat. 
and he changed it to Trans World Air Airlines or Trans World Airlines. In, the, in those days, in 1937, he had no way to travel Trans World. There was no airplane built yet that could go around the world. They could with a lot of stops. It would take a week, you know. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, you can fly pretty much around the world if you want to on a, on a modern jet. You can fly around in 24 hours. You go around the world a time and a half times. Okay. Oh, that's amazing. But not 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 then. Or now because of COVID and everything. Well, yeah. Now it's a whole different story. But what I've heard from people that go to like they travel to Australia or whatever from here it's a 22 hour flight and it's terrible it's awful what makes it awful or it's too, way too expensive because you're in your seat for a day and a half like like on the old trains then you're sore you're not comfortable and it gets boring you don't know where you are you know uh, you have to find a way to make it interesting a lot of people don't all they want to do is sit there and watch movies. I mean, you can only see so much movies, you know. Put some traffic over here. That's exciting. Supposed to be uh, better tomorrow, drier, sunnier. see the blinker go in there? Do you think it not means anything? <laughs> there we go. That has to be really poorly thought out, in my opinion. It's supposed to be temporary. You know, they thought they were going to do away with it in two days. Or and two weeks. Or two months, or two years, or whatever. It's still there. And nobody really take serious to making it permanent. That's too much money for them, right? Too much effort, yeah. And, and yeah, political... Uh, no political will, okay? That's a shocker. Because that... That... Uh, Priorities prioritize the suburbanites. They don't deserve that. If they want to live in the suburbs and they can't stand with a little traffic, that's too bad, right? Because all the effort's going to go into urban city and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Old, old way of thinking. Pretty much. In all seriousness, if, if you leave, if you heard Marky. And I'm not going to tell you other than the funny... I think it's a funny uh, nickname myself, Malarkey, Ed Malarkey. <laughs> but anyway, if you listen to Ed Markey's uh, talk,
talk. I don't know if it's a speech, but it was a talk after he had won the election. Mm -hmm. His thrust was that uh, the, the future is for the young people. Of course, he, this is going back to his uh, endorsement from AOC in New York, okay? Mm -hmm. That the world is for the young people and the older people. Of course, he's how old? You're 78. I would say you're older. But the older people have had their time. It's, it's in the past. And we have to, the world has to move on and, pro, and progress. Progress to what? He's not saying. Okay. But the point is that, how is it he's 78 years old and he's so easily, you know, and so blatantly telling everybody how older people that have so much experience and so much knowledge and generally make uh, decisions 